Managing the COVID-19 Special Education Landscape, Video Shorts. What is virtual learning? What do we know? What questions do we still have? What resources are available if viewers have more questions or want more information or want to be updated? Hi, this is Jeff with the Arc of Aurora and I'm here with my co-host Pineapple. And we're here today to talk about virtual learning which we're all doing right now and there's a lot to learn and hopefully over time it'll get better and in the meantime i just want to kind of talk a little bit about what i know about it so virtual learning is a web-based platform for an educational institution used to present resources learning activities and interactions based on educational activities um, it will also provide different forms of assessments to kind of monitor the learning as we go. Um, so virtual learning, there's a lot of good things about it and there's some bad things about it. I'm going to first talk about the good things because that's quite frankly, more fun to talk about. So some of the good things about virtual learning, um, uh, it's going to be more self, uh, paced learning style. So it's not going to be, um, based on keeping up with the herd. It's gonna be uh, an opportunity to come back to material and spend as much time as you need on material that the child's not getting. And a, a lot of students with disabilities, sometimes they struggle when they have to keep up with the, the pack of students learning and they don't quite get a concept and the whole class moves on. So this will be an opportunity to learn at your own pace. Um, another thing, this is kind of small, but it's something. Um, there's no wasted time on transportation. Some kids have, you know, from getting out the door to actually getting into the classroom, sometimes it, it's almost an hour worth of time. Um, so all that time wasted on transportation is now time that can be used in the home or, you know, on, you know, just spending time with family. Um, but anything's pretty much better than being on a bus or waiting for a bus or getting off a bus and waiting for class to start in my opinion. Um, another thing, the flexibility is gonna be good here. Um, now there's gonna be some special education services that are done at a specific time with a service provider, but overall, a lot of the virtual learning lessons, they can be ac accessed by the student when it's best for the student. And we know a lot of students with autism uh, have trouble sleeping at night, or they have nights where they don't sleep at all. And this would give them a chance to sleep in and you know, get to be at the best they can be the next day before they start their lessons. And you know, to be frank too, there's a lot of kids that don't do so well at the beginning of the day and they need to kind of get going and get some action activity going on before they actually can learn the best way that they can learn. Um, also, what else? There's some more other good things. Um, oh, introverted students, uh, students that are, you know, not likely to, you know, join in group discussions. Some of these students um, do really well on online and the chat rooms. I was, <laughs> whenever I talk about Peter's stuff, I always do that. Uh, anyway, some students do better in group chats, so they might be able to participate with uh, their, you know, classmates more because there's less anxiety about typing something in than speaking out in front of a group. So that could definitely help introverted students. Uh, so teachers, they've got some advantages here too. They're going to have more time to actually teach because they're not going to be having to do so many class management tasks. And you know, if a, if a classroom teacher is spending time um, with a particular student um, about staying on task, you know, the whole class is on hold. Virtual learning, that that's not really a thing. Um, so that gives the teachers more time and they're also gonna have more time to do traditional uh, lesson planning. Um, and then parents should be able to access the teachers throughout the day through email because the teachers aren't gonna be managing a class of kids. So it could definitely improve day-to-day -day communication. Um, and let's see, the, the teachers, they could end up spending more time with the individual pupils that need the support uh, throughout the day. Um, but these things, you know, the teachers only had four days or five days to prepare to do this virtual learning platform. So we're going to have to give them a little bit of time to kind of 
you know, get used to how it is and, you know, figure out the best ways of doing everything. Um, another advantage for parents, parents, um, they're, they're going to be more involved in the learning of their child. Um, and they're going to really get to see the skills and deficits their child has in the academic uh, different areas. Um, it's also going to be more time to spend with your child if they're lucky enough to be at home with their child. Uh, and then, you know, parents take on a role that we call learning coach. Um, and the learning coach is there to support the student with online learning and communication with teachers when needed. And, uh, you know, in the elementary level, a learning coach might spend three to six hours a day doing that. In middle school, it's more like two to four hours a day. In high school, you know, a lot of times it's going to be just one or two hours. As the student gets older, the learning coach role of a parent is lessened. Um, so overall, uh, I still have a lot of questions about, um, you know, what kind of problems are going to arise over time with this virtual learning? There's going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to kind of, you know, work on together as a team and try to figure out. Uh, the IEP process is going to be a little bit different. They're going to want to move forward with the IEPs, um, but there's going to be a lot of different uh, concerns that are going to arise out of that. And the special ed services, uh, we're going to hopefully get those services going and get the right amount of minutes. Uh, so we don't fall behind on all that. So I, I'm concerned about all those things and those are questions I have that are gonna hopefully be answered as more time passes. And then as far as resources go, parents, um, Cherry Creek Schools and Aurora Public Schools have uh, on their website, they have remote learning uh, tabs where you can learn more about what's going on. And if you have questions, first reach out to the um, case manager or teacher and if you're having trouble, you know, navigating with them, reach out to your ARC advocate and we'll be happy to jump in and try to help with the communication and get you what you need. Uh, thanks for listening and I'll be back soon. And Pineapples is saying goodbye too. Stay tuned for more information on how the COVID crisis may impact your family member's special education. Or reach out to your ARC of Aurora advocate at 720 213 1420. We are here to help.